Thank you, Noel. My fellow returns and friends, good afternoon. It's great to be here. Uh, i give you a thumbnail sketch of the Rugby Foundation's future vision plan. Middle button, mate. Middle. Yeah. So, in the, the next seven or eight, ten minutes, I'm going to try and explain what, what the future vision plan is about, why, very important to know why, when, how, and the help, the resources that are available to help, help you on your way. Um, so, by way of background, I'm going to talk background, and just overview what the future vision plan is about, some of the main changes we can look forward to, and some of the things that clubs and districts can and maybe ought to be doing right now and in particular the help that's available. So let's start with uh, up that slide going on. So by way of background, um, the foundation kicked off in 1917, as you all know, and as the centenary was approaching, the trustees decided it would be very useful to review what's going on. Uh, and they initiated the study, uh, consultants were involved, there were uh, uh, thousands of Rotarians were um, interviewed, and they came up with a number of conclusions. First of all, they found that, to some extent, the foundation has become a victim of its own success. Uh, you know, it took something like 35 years for the first 10,000 matching grants to be approved. That's from 1935 to 2000. And then it took only four years for the next 10,000 to be approved. So you can see this rapid escalation in success. Um, they also found that there were a large number of small projects and they became smaller and larger in number and therefore harder to manage. Administration costs were going up, uh, delays were experienced and certain frustrations that I suspect one or two of you might have uh, read about. Uh, so, in short, they found that only 20%, if you take out the big project at Polio, which we hope anticipate is coming to an end in the next few years, they found that only 20% of the funding was going to long-term, sustainable, high-impact projects, and only 80% uh, was going to the short-term. And the plan is to turn that around from 2080 to 2020. Um, they analysed other organisations, such as Lions and three or four others, some of them are very well known here in Australia, but they're basically American. These are all organisations that have more or less the same budget, and budget the foundation, about 100,000, 100 million people take a bit. And that graph, don't worry about the detail, but on the right you'll see the number of grants that the foundation gives compared with all the other, other organisations. So you can see we have big number of relatively small projects and you have to ask yourself, is that the best way of doing things? Um, on top of all that, the foundation is a very complicated entity. Uh, we have not only 4,000, over 4,000 grants per annum, uh, there are 12 different types of grants, 12 funding models, in nine languages, something like 200 countries and territories, 29 currencies, there are 30 different volunteer positions. By that we mean, you know, if you said there's a district Rotary Foundation chair, there's a district governor, a regional Rotary Foundation governor, 30 of them. So imagine trying to run that show with all the other constraints. So the time was right to make some changes. So the trustees came up with a future vision plan with the following goals. These goals are centred around a new grants model. And the objectives are very clear, first of all, to simplify the whole process, to focus efforts of Rotarians uh, onto, club, onto projects, to make sure that they can support both local and global activities. How often have you heard some Rotarians say, all the money goes overseas? Well, we need to make sure there's a nice balance there. Transfer more decisions locally to clubs and districts. Less bureaucracy, more decision making back home enhance Rotary's public image, and uh, all of that helps the process along. So they're the goals. And uh, this was a very bold and brave exercise, and because of that, the trustees decided not to just roll it out in one hit, 
they decided to have a, uh, a pilot process. So back, uh, back in 2008-9, 100 districts were selected as pilot districts, 100 out of the 530 or whatever it is these days. Um, they were then trained, and for three years they were, they have been, uh, piloting this program. Uh, we're now in the beginning of the third year, uh, so in less than 12 months, this will be rolled out to the Rotary world after suitable tweaking up. So there's been a lot of activity, a lot of feedback, some changes have already been made and announced, and there will be more. So on the 1st of July next year, uh, the Rotary Foundation Future Vision Plan will be rolled out to the world. And, and that's a major step. So what are the major changes that we can look forward to? Well, first of all, new simple grant structure, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Vocational training teams will replace group study exchange teams. Now these vocational training teams will have much more flexibility to the GSE team. <coughs> um, the number of members, the period, the time they can go, you can have one team going one way, one the other, or both. Uh, there'll be a much stronger humanitarian focus and in the vocational focus. Now, I have to say that this is one of the more uh, controversial aspects. There are a lot of people who uh, feel uh, upset, disappointed that groups have exchanged in its old form will be no longer. Um, those concerns have been heard by the trustees, be assured. Uh, they've all been weighed up, and um, the conclusion is that the way the GSE program has developed in its long history, uh, it's changed the priorities, the needs have changed, and the feeling is that there's a better use for the limited humanitarian dollar. <coughs> Having said that, if a district feels particularly strongly they would like something that looks and feels like the GSE team, they can still do it. They can organise it. The only thing is they won't get a world match fund for it. They can still do it out of their own funding sources. So that option will be there. But it's understood that the message has been heard and weighed up two minutes. Um, so the three types of grants. Some of you know that there have been two grants. Well, that's the tweaking already. Three grants, district grants, uh, up to 50% of one's uh, district designated funds can be transferred. Global grants, which is where uh, there will be a match. These are uh, bigger projects than in the past. So they need to be $15,000 grant or $30,000 project. They need to be in one or more of the areas of focus and they must be sustainable. And then there will be package grants, and they relate to strategic partnerships which have been arranged beforehand by the Rotary Foundation, and there are four of them, Aga Khan University, Vocational Training Teams, uh, I'll give credit, Mercy Ships and, uh, and UNESCO IHG, which is a uh, university for water and sanitation type experts. The six areas of focus I'm going to skip through because you will have heard about these before and time doesn't permit. But um, uh, as you can see, they are peace and conflict resolution, disease prevention and treatment, water and sanitation, maternal and child health, basic education and literacy, and community and uh, economic and community development. So um, those areas of focus will be what Rotary stands for in the future, so they're very important. So very briefly, what can districts <coughs> do now? Uh, well, they can appoint facilitators or, or, government, or district foundation chairs for that interim period. Adopt areas of focus now, they don't wait for a year. Uh, various other documents, learn from pilot districts, and there are a great number of excellent resources available, and I'll be talking about some of those at the breakout sessions uh, tomorrow. And uh, just finally, um, so they're the resources, and I just want to leave you with that slide which you've seen before, but I just want to assure you that this activity of the Future Vision Plan isn't something out there incidental to Rotary International itself. It's quite central because as you can see, uh, it's all about better projects which lead to greater impact and increased membership which goes right back to stronger lives. Thank you very much.